Good afternoon. On behalf of the National Park Service and the staff of Andersonville National Historic Site, I want to welcome you all to the Andersonville National Cemetery. My name is Gia Wagner. As the park superintendent, I have the honor and privilege of serving as the mistress of ceremonies for today's annual Memorial Day service. As is customary, we will begin by paying respect to our American flag, which will be advanced by the America's Fire Department Color Guard. After the colors are posted, I will lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Following that, the National Anthem, performed by the United States Army Maneuver Center of Excellence Band, the color will, colors will be retired and the invocation will be offered by Father Richard Nelson of Calvary Episcopal Church. Will you please stand for the advancement of the colors, if you are able? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Let us pray. O oh God of the nations, we give you thanks for those who have risked and given their mortal lives in service to our country. We remember their sacrifice and are inspired by their examples. We pray that their witness may be remembered by all generations of Americans. In days of peril, may their legacy motivate us all to give of ourselves for the welfare and continuance of our republic 
without counting the cost, without fear, without shirking our duty. Help us to live our lives with honor in the light of their honor. We ask this in your name, Almighty God, and to your glory. Amen. Thank you, Father Nelson. You may be seated. Again, welcome to all of you. Um, it's been a tough two years for everyone, and I'm really grateful to be here uh, to acknowledge this day of mourning and remembrance of our fallen service members with our community, with our many supporters, and our staff. I've been thinking a lot about how events like Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and our Rees event can bring so many of us together, no matter our politics, the age, or background. Our fallen service members' dedication to our country, their service, and their many sacrifices to further the cause of freedom is appreciated by all Americans, which is the reason this day has endured since 1868. During the past two weeks, many volunteers have come to honor our fallen service members. Rolling Thunder Chapter 3 out of Warner Robins raised all the large flags along these roads last Friday. The Friends of Andersonville does rent this lovely shade tent that you're all enjoying. Um, we had an army of scouts, the Dixie Crows, and many other volunteers from the community here yesterday putting up a flag on each of the headstones. And of course today, having you all here with us to remember and mourn our fallen service members, along with our esteemed presenters and volunteers. Thank you to all who have come this week and many times during the year to remember our fallen with their time and talent. The site of Andersonville Prison was a place of suffering and sacrifice during the American Civil War, where disease and death did not discriminate. The almost 13,000 soldiers who lie here from the Civil War and those that have perished in other wars are the reason we gather today to collectively mourn and honor their service and sacrifice. Memorial Day was established as the official day of mourning for those U.S. military personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving their country. The flags in the National Cemetery are but a small token of our esteem for our American service members, both lost in service and passed on in life. I want to also thank all current service members and our retired veterans who've joined us today, including many of our park staff and partners, for their service to our country and for helping make this event possible. And to each of you who made the time to be here with us today, thank you so much. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Fred Boyles, a Navy Reserve veteran and a man who also served as superintendent for many years here at Andersonville. Fred remains a strong advocate of this park uh, and the National Cemetery, serving on the board of both the American Ex-Prisoners of War and the Friends of Andersonville. Fred will recognize our veterans during the service song medley. Fred? Good afternoon. It is my special privilege to represent the Friends of Andersonville, a small but very dedicated organization founded in 1988 to support the National Park Service here at Andersonville National Historic Site. In 1995, our little organization decided that it might be a good idea to establish an endowment fund that would allow people to donate funds to this, to this uh, what we call the Andersonville Trust, and we would invest that money and the proceeds would go to the park to pay for things that the government could not or would not be able to pay for, like a tent, so we could be in the shape. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And sure enough, I remember thinking at the time in 1995, that's a crazy idea. Nobody's going to give us money for that kind of thing. <clears throat> well, I'm proud today to tell you that the fund 
stands at $2.7 million. But I'm even more proud to tell you that just last year, just last year, the amount of funds over the course of the Andersonville Trust has exceeded a million dollars given to the National Park Service here at Andersonville. Of course, we are here today to remember the fallen. But it's also important for us to remember all of those who continue to serve us today, uh, both at home and around the world, but also the veterans who are with us today. And so, as is a great tradition at events like this, the wonderful U.S. Army Maneuver Center of Excellence Band, led by uh, Staff Sergeant Johnson, will play the service medley. And when your service song is played, we ask that you stand up to represent your branch and so that we may acknowledge your service. Now there's one little caveat too, and that is there's a new service since we last gathered for Memorial Day, and that's the U.S. Space Force. Well, they don't have a service medley yet. I'm sure they're gonna have one one day, and I bet it's gonna be interesting. But anyway, if you are a veteran of the Space Force, please stand when the Air Force song is played.
and all the Friends of Andersonville and the American Ex-Prisoners of War Organization who continue to support the work of this National Cemetery. With great pleasure, I now call upon another longtime supporter of Andersonville National Cemetery and the historic site, the Honorable Sanford D. Bishop, Jr., representative from Georgia's 2nd Congressional District, to introduce today's featured speaker. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Bishop. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it because today we get to celebrate the service and the sacrifice of those who gave their last full honor of devotion to the greatest country in the, on the face of the earth, the United States of America. I am honored to join you today as we solemnly remember and pay our respects to the servicemen and servicewomen who have sacrificed their lives for our country. That is what we do on Memorial Day, but it is what we should do each and every day of the year. We gather today on the hallowed ground on which so many Union soldiers were buried during the Civil War. In the years since, Andersonville National Cemetery has become the final resting place for American service members who have served our country and is home to the American Prisoner of War Museum. What we know today as Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day, based on the tradition of decorating graves with flowers, wreaths, and flags. It was first widely observed on May 30th, 1868, at Arlington National Cemetery to commemorate those who died in the Civil War. Before I introduce today's distinguished keynote speaker, I would also like to recognize the families whose support is crucial to our men and women in uniform. The scriptures tell us, greater love hath no man, but that he lay down his life for his friends. We celebrate those who have laid down their lives for our country. For many of these families, they have had to endure the heartbreaking sacrifice of their loved one who died in the line of duty, protecting our nation and upholding the Constitution which grants us the rights and liberties we enjoy. In remembering those we have lost, we may we pay our respects, share our condolences, and be inspired by their service and sacrifice. These selfless patriots paid the ultimate price for the freedoms we enjoy in America. In behalf of a grateful nation, we say thank you. Thank you to the service members. Thank you to the families. It is now my honor to introduce Lieutenant Colonel James Wolfe, United States Air Force retired, our speaker for today. Colonel Wolfe is a native son of America's Georgia. He served in the United States Air Force where he initially enlisted and served nine years as a communications systems operator. He then attended officer training school and received his commission in 1999. Colonel Wolf is a master air battle manager with more than 3,800 flying hours on the E-8C. He has served as an evaluator and instructor mission crew commander on the E-8C J-STARS and as a senior air defense officer in the NATO Air Operations Center. During his 30-year military career, he was stationed in Korea, Washington, D.C., Florida, Italy, right here in Georgia at Robbins Air Force Base. After 9-11, he deployed nine times to the Middle East in support of the war on terrorism. Most of those deployments as a mission crew commander 
aboard the E-8C Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System aircraft. He has operational experience in Operations Southern Watch, Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom, New Dawn, Inherent Resolve, and Resolute Support. Among his many awards and decorations are the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal with two Oak Leaf Clusters, clusters. Air Medal with eight Oak Leaf Clusters, Joint Service Commendation Medal, Kosovo Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Iraqi Campaign Medal, and the Air and Space Campaign Medal. Currently, Lieutenant Colonel Wolf is commander of the American Legion John D. Mathis Post Two in America's Georgia and the junior vice commander of the American Legion Department of Georgia, District Three. Please join me in welcoming and applauding Colonel Wolf and his family in appreciation for his service and their support. Colonel Wolf. We thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, I got to follow that. All uh, work. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank uh, Gia and Charles and the National Park Service for inviting me out here. It's an honor to be here today. Their mission was noble. Evacuate desperate civilians journeying to escape a brutal, brutal regime. The 13 U.S. service members who died during a terrorist bombing in Afghanistan last August will not be the last American heroes to make such a sacrifice, but they represent the best of a generation. There was Navy Corpsman Matt Sovia of Berlin Heights, Ohio. His high school football coach described him as fearless. He was 22. Army Staff Sergeant Brian Knauss of Corytown, Tennessee was a member of the 82nd Airborne. He was 23. Marine Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover of Salt Lake City was serving his third tour of duty in Afghanistan. He was 31. Marine Corps Sergeant Johanny Rosario Picardo of Lawrence, Massachusetts was a member of her brigade's female engagement team responsible for screening civilians while respecting cultural sensitivities. She was 25. Marine Corps Sergeant Nicole D. of Sacramento, California posted an Instagram photo of herself cradling an Afghan baby in the caption, I love my job, just days before the attack. She was 23. Marine Corporal Hunter Lopez of Indio, California was the son of two Riverside Sheriff's Department officers. He was 22. U.S. Marine Corps Corporal Humberto Sanchez of Logan Support, Indiana, was on the homecoming court during his senior year in high school. He was 22. Lance Corporal Jared Schmidt of St. Charles, Missouri, liked to play video games according to his father. He was 20. Lance Corporal Dylan Marola of Cucamonga, California, had been in Afghanistan for just more than a week. He planned to attend college and study engineering. He was 20. Lance Corporal Kareem Nikui of Norco, California, served in junior ROTC before joining the Marines. He was 20. Not only are these diverse men and women forever in our hearts, but for those who knew them, they are forever young. They came from every background, yet they shared a common goal to serve America and make life better for others. It was the same ethos that drove our friend war veterans 70 years ago. George Andrew Davis Jr. was a World War II flying ace with the Army Air Forces before taking his remarkable skills to the newly created U.S. Air Force. Flying an F-86 Sabre, he downed 14 North Korean, Chinese, and Soviet aircraft. He led his last aerial patrol mission on February 10, 1952 near the Manchurian border. Major Davis spotted 12 enemy MiG-15 aircraft speeding towards friendly fighter bombers. He sped through the rear of the enemy formation and downed two enemy MiGs. Rather than evade the enemy, who by then had been concentrating fire upon his aircraft, 
He reduced his speed to engage a third MiG-15. It was during this engagement that he sustained a direct hit and lost his life. Major Davis was 31. He was promoted posthumously to lieutenant colonel and awarded the Medal of Honor. His citation states, the indomitable fighting spirit, heroic, aggress heroic aggressiveness, and superb courage in ex engaging the enemy against formidable odds exemplified valor at its highest. From the American Revolution to the global war on terrorism, more than one million American veterans have made the supreme sacrifice. They died so that we could continue to cherish the things they loved, God, country, and family. That is why we gather here on Memorial Day, to honor the memory of our fallen warriors who have given everything for their country. We are also reminded on this day that brave men and women have always stepped forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of America's armed forces, willing to fight and if necessary, die for the sake of freedom. And reflecting on the sacrifices of their comrades during World War I, the founders of the American Legion saw four common pillars as to why Americans so often enter the nation's call, even to the point of sacrificing their lives. They do it to provide a strong national defense, to keep America safe and secure against those enemies who would destroy our American way of life. They did it for their fellow comrades, for those fighting by their side against all odds and for those who eventually separate from the military but proudly claim their status as veterans. They do it for American core values of God and country, family, patriotism, and our freedom to worship as we please. They do it for their children so that they can grow up in America that is strong and free. It is through this last building, children, that we must continue to honor the spirit of these heroes. We must share the legacy and tell the stories of those who are no longer here. Nearly 7,000 American men and women have died while fighting global war on terrorism. Many were parents. The loss felt by Gold Star families is forever. There are many tangible things we can do to honor the service of our fallen heroes. First and foremost is to take care of their loved ones. In some cases, this means providing financial assistance to help their children obtain higher education. Across this great country, the American Legion is raising funds to ensure that college education will be a reality for these families. This is why the American Legion established the American Legion Legacy Scholarship Fund. It is also why we wear the poppy, a symbol of hope that sprouted on a Belgian battlefield. Memorial Day is not about picnics or parades. Though there is nothing wrong with enjoying and celebrating our American way of life. Memorial Day is about gratitude and remembrance. It is about honoring the men and women who made it possible for us to gather here today in peace. But the reason there is a Memorial Day, the reason that we are gathered here, is to remember those who made our way of life possible. They truly are the guardians of our freedom. I'll leave you with these words from American Legion National Commander Paul Dillon. From the World Wars to Korea, from Vietnam to the Middle East, every U.S. military headstone has a story, and every one is inspirational in its own way. Together they bear witness to the selflessness described in John 15, 13. Greater love has no more than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. God bless you. Always remember, never forget. Thank you very much. Move to the left side of the rostrum and stand by your wreath.
the American Ex-Prisoners of War. Presenter Charles Barr, Cemetery Administrator. Friends of Andersonville, Fred Boyles. American Legion, John D. Mathis, Post 2, Presenters, Leo Roots, Legionnaire, and Larry Smith, Legionnaire. National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, Council of Safety. Presenter, Lisa Simpson, Regent. Leela Case, Recording Secretary. Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 27. Presenters, Ray Moses, Senior Vice Commander, and Lola Moses, Commander, DAVA. Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War, Emma Stevenson, Tent Number no. 4, Presenter, Rebecca Rostrom, President. Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War Southern Memorial Week. Presenter, Zoe Kane Pricing. Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War, Department of Georgia. Presenter, Rebecca 
Rostrum, President. Ladies Grand Army of the Republic, presenter, Caitlin Edwards, lead ranger, Andersonville National Historic Center. Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War, Clara Martin, tent number three, presented by Charles Barr, Cemetery Administrator. close today's service, I will invite Father Nelson to offer the benediction, which will be followed by the playing of taps and a song, Mansions of the Lord, performed by the U.S. Army Maneuver Center of Excellence. Father Nelson? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this service of remembrance. Stir up in us the desire, wisdom, and strength to honor the fallen in our lives of dedication and service to all citizens of this land and the nations of the world. Send us in peace and safety with resolve to live the ideals for which our honored dead gave the last full measure of devotion. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God give you peace. Amen. Amen. <coughs>